Hey guys, um, this is going to get a bit random, okay, just to let you know. We're going to make a giant TED band, okay? Now, we've got some boom whackers over here. These are small plastic innovations, and they're wonderful. And we, we would like four volunteers to come up on the stage to join me, please. So put your hand up. We've got one, two, three, four. Lovely, lovely. Okay. Thank you. So, you can be G. F sharp. You don't want that one? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you guys to stand in a line, starting with G over here. We're going to, we're going to come this way, guys. Sorry. We, all we need to do is hit the chair. Okay? So that's it. Let's get in the line. Let's have this green one next to dark green, please. And... You two swapping around as well. Okay, now, where's my clicker? Uh, here we go, okay, it's all going to be unveiled now. We are going to be doing We Will Rock You, okay? So we're going to have a little test with the boom whackers first, okay? So it's going to be We, hold on guys, We Will, We Will Rock You. Two times. And again, we will rock you. Oh, that's not too bad. Should we try it one more time? Okay. We, we will rock you. Okay, nice. Hope, preferably in time, but that's fine. Good work. <laughs> right, now, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. Okay? Stand up. Now, if you're on this side of the room, you're going to be stomping and clapping. Okay? So I'm going to show you. Stomp, stomp, clap. Stomp, stomp, clap. Can we do that? Let's go. Lovely. Keep it going. Okay, good. That's good. We've rehearsed. Okay, and over this side, we're just going to be singing. Okay? I need to plug my guitar in. Okay, we'll have a little practice as well. Sorry, let me just plug this in. Okay. We ready? One, two, three. Three, four. We will, we will rock you. I can't hear you, Ted. Come on. We will, we will rock you. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Okay. So this is how it's going to go. Stompers and clappers. Then boom whackers. <laughs> then singers. Okay. Are we ready? Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Ready, guys? We will, we will rock you. Yes, good. And again. Lovely. One more time. Ready, singers? We will, we will rock you. Keep going, boom whackers. Give it all you've got. We will, we will rock you. Yeah, round of applause for yourselves, everybody. <laughs> Boom whackers, you can leave the stage now. Just put them, put them Thank you. Lovely. Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys just to think for a minute about how music affects you and how music has impacted on your lives. So think about the special occasions, the birthdays, maybe your wedding, your first dance. Think of the, the songs. There must be songs that come into your head. You probably listen to music on the way in here today in your car. Music has a really powerful way of affecting us. And sometimes it's unconscious. We don't even know how much it affects us. In the worst of times, when we're in despair, music can console us, make us feel better, make it more bearable. And in the best of times, it just makes it better. Music accompanies our life and makes the best times even better. I'm going to start by talking a bit about myself. This is a little me. Um, now, at, when, I, when I was younger, I was painfully anxious, really, really shy. And um, I, I couldn't even go to school. When I was in reception class, I was one of those criers, you know, the, the ones that my mum and dad would drop me off and I'd just cry profusely for months on end. And I was always really shy and anxious. And I didn't even pick up a guitar until I was 14 years old. So 
that might not sound so profound to you, but this now defines me. I'm up here talking to you about music, so you can imagine that I didn't even discover it until I was 14. Now, for me, music wasn't accessible. I didn't think music was for me. Music was for a certain type of person. It was for them. It was for the academics. It, was, it wasn't for me. I was shy, quite naughty. I wasn't that type of person, and music wasn't for me. Now, as I got older, I did get interested in music, and I started really loving music, singing in my bedroom. And one of my friends started playing the guitar, and I was, I was so jealous. It was really cool. We got the bus home together most days, and in my driveway, I asked him to play me a song, and he played me this. Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And that was the coolest thing that could have happened to me at that time. I was amazed. And two weeks later, in my lounge, me and him performed that song to my dad and his work colleagues. Okay, a bunch of builders. Um, and that was where it really started. I still didn't play the guitar. And a few weeks later, um, he, was, he was playing the guitar to me. And I said, oh, he's playing that song. I think it was a Red Hot Chili Peppers song. I didn't want to hear that song. And he said, well, you do it then if you think you can do better. So... I kind of did. I learned to play the guitar. Now, I'm going to uh, talk to you a, bit, a little bit about the School of Popular Music. So, I started the School of Popular Music three years ago. And the idea behind this was to make a social hub for music. Something more exciting and different. And here, anybody can come. There are, there are no tests to come. They're, they're in their uniforms and it doesn't matter about age or background. You come and you have a really, really good time. So we don't have... We have St. Sampson students and Elizabeth College students. They all come in. They're all different ages and they're all joining bands. And the only thing that they care about is the music. And the music is what their identity is. So we created this social hub. And as you can see, this is our guys in uh, summer school having a really good time. So I also want to show you uh, a video. So this is a few of our students, older students. We have Wendy, who's going to be up first, and... She is a uh, fitness coach. We also have Andrew, Andrew Beacon, who's been suffering some uh, mental health problems of late, and music has really aided him. We have Ryan Ozan, and we've been funding his lessons. He came from Autism Guernsey, and just getting up on a stage has really helped him. And Rob Foss, who had a, a motorcycle accident and has some nerve damage, they're going to speak to you about how they found their musical journey so far. Uh, so my name is Wendy and I am 53 and I have guitar lessons with Tyler. My name is Andrew Beacon. I'm aged 46 and I'm currently learning to play the guitar. My name is Ryan Ozan and I'm 24 years old and for School of Popular Music I do vocals. Uh, I'm Rob, I'm 51. I've been playing guitar since about 14 and I started getting lessons here about a year ago. Before I ever learned to play anything, I had music playing in my head all the time, and that's me, that's what I do. It's very, it's an intensely personal thing, but equally, when there's a lot of people around, it's a fantastic shared thing. Johnny makes it quite unique. The rest of my family played instruments, and I was the only one who didn't, so I thought I should take up the, uh, the challenge. Oh, uh, I just love playing the guitar it's really relaxing and um yeah it's, it's just completely therapeutic for me phenomenal like, i'm making new friends my by music and like i did a gig a couple weeks back and i did my own song and it's called it can't be fixed and if you want to watch it go on youtube and type in rhino san and i'm there so please subscribe my channel It gives me something um, to think about, um, other than the daily, the daily rigors of life. It changed me for who I am. I'm more confident in my life. I've got two children who I love and my wife who I love. Um, it's very, very difficult to allocate myself time and feel comfortable about that. Um, but it, I think putting into the structure of having lessons with it has given it sort of a purpose and a shape. 
Playing the guitar for me is just a way to relax. Um, I go to my lessons, there's no pressure, so that's really enjoyable. What happens if I've had a really busy day at work and I pick up my guitar and have a play? It's just, yeah, as I said, therapeutic and I just enjoy it. As you can see there, music for everyone has been our tagline. And it's a campaign that we have started on. About a year ago, we, we started with the campaign Music for Everyone. Music for Everyone isn't about handing everybody a guitar or a violin or ukulele. You know, if, I, if I just gave everyone here today a guitar, would you go away and learn how to play the guitar? I think probably not. It's about the delivery of the lessons. It's about how we make it accessible and we take down barriers so everybody feels like music is for them. It's not about being the best, it's about enjoying it and using it and getting closer through music. We've embarked on a few different things so far with our Music for Everyone campaign. We've been across all the, re the reception classes in Guernsey and we've just run a workshop, rock and pop workshop. We go in, we sing songs, Beatles and Queen at the moment. And they get to interact, it's kind of like we did today. Um, they get to play some guitar with us and just to and join in. And I'd like to share with you some of the quotes that we've got from the children. It was really good. I love rock and roll. Tyler and Casey were cool. I would like to marry them. <laughs> that was Lily, aged five. It was great, amazing. I loved it so much it made me cry. I was so happy with it. I loved playing the guitar. That's Willow. They were amazing. I played the guitar and it made me feel all lovely. That's sorry. And they mean this. We all know that kids don't lie. These are genuine feelings. So they were actual tears of joy coming. You know, this, this, this occurred. And such a small act from us to go in and sing some songs to the children, easy for us, made a massive impact on them. They absolutely loved it. We've also been lucky enough to run Be The Band sessions with the secondary schools as well. Slightly different. This is a lunchtime club. It's on for an hour and it's very much an open forum. So they get to come along. They don't have to come along. They can. They can eat their lunch there if they want to. And it's all about the social aspect again of music. We make it really, really fun. We make sure they have a great time. And then when they keep coming back, that's when we can get them learning. A couple of shots of the, um, the bands here, looking very cool, standing against the uh, purple wall. These guys are called the Unidentified. <laughs> um, but these things, they're not just restricted with age either. So we, we were lucky enough to run Be The Band in the Guernsey prison. And that was an amazing experience for me. I, I, w I went in and, and r ran the band. And it was, they were so petrified, these guys, to perform. We performed um, for an evening f to all the fellow inmates. And the guys were so petrified. One of them couldn't do it. They were scared of ridicule. They were scared that they were going to be made fun of. But actually, the opposite happened. There was respect in the room. There was applause. Everyone thought it was great. And the guy that didn't do it was absolutely gutted that he, he decided not to. My point is this. I could have an hour, like I might have with a, with a band. I can have 20 minutes. Today I've had 15 minutes with you guys. Um, my job isn't to teach you guitar. It's not to teach you how to play Stairway to Heaven, though that would be cool. My job is to inspire you. My job is to make you want to strive. Thank you.